go up to Norman, Oklahoma, Bob Prisbilla. Covers the Oklahoma Sooners for Schooner, Sooner Scoop. We appreciate some time, Bob. How are you? I'm doing fine. How's everything going? It's a little hectic down here, to be quite honest. And I understand <laughs> it's probably the same up there. I see the, the last podcast that you tweeted out on your feed said, enough with the LSU rumors. Let's actually talk about the football team. I think the talk about LSU's football team, specifically on Louisiana Monroe week, is about done. So we're trying to kind of shake every tree <laughs> that we can. Um I guess I'll just kind of leave it open-ended. Obviously, with the J-Boy show kind of coming out yesterday and saying that the offer's in his hands, Bruce Feldman said that ain't going to happen. A lot of back and forth. What are you all hearing up there? A lot of back and forth, but we're not really hearing it from our side. Yeah. You know, That was one thing that's sort of been confusing about the last week. It felt like it was the perfect storm as OU went 9-0 and going into a bye week, and then you learn Alex French, defense coordinator, is interviewing for his Texas Tech head head coaching job. And then a few days later, Lincoln Riley misses his regular scheduled Tuesday press conference, which he, he had never missed in the five years that he's been the head the, the head coach. And he says it's a personal matter, but obviously that's not enough. You know, that's going to lead to even more speculation as to what that even means. And, you know, so it just it felt like a perfect storm of events where if you wanted to believe any sort of rumors, you had evidence to try to start connecting those dots. But from our side of things, and talking to a lot of trusted sources around Riley, around the administration, this was definitely more news to us as compared to, oh, it's a possibility. It's a likelihood of this going down. It still feels very far-fetched, and it, would, it might even surprise us more than when Bob Stoops initially stepped down and Lincoln took over. Wow. That's uh, I mean, that's, that says a lot. Cause that kind of shocked me from way outside uh, to hear that. Cause obviously it stoops his age before we get into hypotheticals. Cause that's obviously what we're, what we're working on here. Let's, let's talk about some actuals. How does the Oklahoma administration feel about Lincoln rally? How does the fan base feel about Lincoln rally to this point in his young head coaching career? There's no doubt that athletic director Joe Castiglio and President Joe Harris and Lincoln Riley have developed a very strong relationship in such a short period of time. Obviously, Joe C has been there for years and years, and you can hear you know the amount of respect, admiration, appreciation of what Riley has been able to do in nearly his five years as head as head coach of the Sooners. And I know Lincoln; you can tell he loves living in Norman. He's loving raising his two girls in the uh, in the state. He's actually building a new house right uh, uh, right now. So I, a lot of it just kind of came not blindsided. Just like these dots don't feel like they're connecting the way that some others think they should. When you look at the fan base, I think this might be the first season where there's a little disappointment. Hey, remember how OU ended the 2020 season? They were 1-2, and two, and then they ran the table, winning the another Big 12 title, beating Florida in the Cotton Bowl. And I know there were a lot of Gators out, but for OU to win a bowl game, it felt like it you know, had been a while since that had happened. And then you had Spencer Rattler coming back. You felt like you had one of the two, three best teams in the entire country. And for whatever reason, it just hasn't connected. Even in the... 9-0 and start, you know, they were ranked number eight by College Football Playoff Committee back-to-back weeks, and you felt like if that didn't fire them up, if that wasn't the wake-up call that that team needed, what the heck would be? And then we saw the performance that they had in, in Waco, and it's just a just a harsh reality set in for a lot of fans that as much as they thought there would be a light bulb moment, it just comes on, they start playing at an elite level, it just isn't going to happen in 2021. Bob Billow covers Oklahoma for Sooner Scoop, chatting about Lincoln Riley and all that's going on up there. Um, you hear when the name comes up, everybody in Tiger Town here is kind of looking at, well, here's the positive, here's the negative. And you hear the positive guys say, look at these offensive statistics. Look at the consistency of getting into the playoff almost every year. And then you hear the other side go, yeah, but they get beat every time they show up. And kind of what's the, the, the thought up there in Norman about that? Yeah, it's a real sense of, frustration definitely among the fan base i'm not, not sure if we've reached that level with the administration yet because I, I think a lot of it was okay you're playing with the hand that was dealt with you you know you had the players that you inherited from bob stoops and you had the defensive turnover after what happened with mike stoops and you had to get your own guys in and i think that's why everyone pointed 
toward 2021 is the season where OU breaks through. The third year with Alex Grinch, it's his guys. For the most part, it's all his guys that he recruited that are now playing on defense. So the fact that they took a step backwards this year is very confusing. It's very frustrating for a lot of the fans to accept because they were all in. It's like this is this was be this is going to be Lincoln Riley's team. You know, not inheriting Baker Mayfield or Kyler Murray and like trying to make them better, but taking the people that he recruited from high school and molding them together into a championship group. And it didn't happen, but you're so excited, at least around here, about Caleb Williams and what he brings to the table that I think as much as people are disappointed about how the first two months of this season have, have gone, they they are anxiously looking ahead to 2022 and wondering how good, how great can Caleb be on, in a full season. Um, with OU coming to the SEC in a few years, uh, there's a lot of people saying that there's no way uh, Lincoln Riley would go to another SEC school. If he did leave, it'd have to be to an NFL team. Uh, would you agree with that consensus? Not necessarily. I think the one thing that's been tough to really figure out about Riley is what is his long-term goal? You know, it's, he doesn't really talk about the NFL with, like, you know, this, this glimmer in his eye or something like that. Like, that's something that he's always aspired to. And so, it's like what, at this point, matters the most in his life. And when you talk to him and you hear him talk about his wife and kids, you get a feeling that family atmosphere, that that family life is something that means a lot. Because any school, any NFL organization can pay him the millions of dollars he's already making in Norman. So it goes more to like quality of life. And, and I, and I don't think here's, here's the thing with Lincoln. He still loves recruiting the day that he does it, the day he hates the FaceTiming, the zoom calls, the, you know, meeting with recruits on official visits, the day that gets under his skin, like it happened with Bob Stoop in the last three, four years of his thing. The day that Lincoln Riley doesn't embrace that day to day recruiting grind, that's when I truly believe he'll start looking for a, another job. Bob Prisbilla covers Oklahoma for Sooner Scoop. All right, here's a hypothetical that no one can really know, but your opinion here is you've covered that program. Um, would Oklahoma be willing to get into a reasonable bidding war with LSU? Obviously, they just extended his contract. If LSU were to come and say, hey, you know, we're going to offer you 10 a year, do you think that's something Oklahoma would be willing to do? That's a great question, and that's actually the one I've been thinking about the last 24, 48 hours is, you know, we've been talking like, no, there's no way. You wouldn't pay in saving level numbers for not saving like success, but you know, a lot of people have just sort of been pointing out, yeah, but if you love the direction your program is going in, you're willing to make that commitment. You're willing to make that sacrifice, despite the fact that everything we've gone through with COVID, the pandemic, the university is losing money like like crazy if you really feel like this is a 20 25 year investment that's going to be worth it you would make that plunge and i think when you hear joe castiglione talk about riley he talks in those terms i i do think you just might be a little bit hesitant just because you really would like to see you know a playoff win or maybe a national championship but if you're so happy with what he's bringing to the table, what he's doing on and off the field in terms of developing the, the characters of the guys that enter the program, the way he is an ambassador to the university, the way he represents the university in all the different events that he does. If you're that satisfied, I almost, you know, almost because I think it was, you know, it was the Mel Tucker thing that kind of caught a lot of people off guard. It's like, would you make that type of leap, that type of money for someone who's not as proven as an on, on-field on coach yet. But if you love where things are and you're even more excited about where they're going, you just might do that. And I could see OU donors doing that same type of thing where they would just embrace what Riley's brought to the program, how they resurrected, what felt. It wasn't a dead program. But after the 2014 season, there were a lot of questions about where this thing was going. Lincoln Riley, Baker Mayfield got that all back on track. And I think there's a lot of people – that you know, would do anything they possibly could to try to make sure that Riley stays in London. All right, two-part question uh, for you here. 
Uh, do you think all these reports of Lincoln Riley is uh, affecting the current players on the team? And uh, hypothetical after that one, since we're in hypothetical heaven right now, uh, <laughs> if Lincoln if Lincoln does decide to leave, do you think he uh, tries to pull some players from this roster to his next uh, destination? I to answer the second part, yes. I, I with the way the one free time exemption transfer rule is is in place, I mean, it'd be uh, there'd be a lot of harsh feelings that would lead to any sort of bad you know bad blood but that's the nature of the business right now and now that there's no penalty toward doing something like that and you actually see it a lot right when a, a, a head coach is hired at another place they take the commitment well now we're into a new era where it's going we're just taking the player and and that's how that is going to uh work out so yeah i definitely think that if if he, he were to leave i, I think he, he he would try to take some guys, and it'd be very curious. It would be a very telling as to just how well some of those guys feel about Lincoln. Like we think he's embraced. We we know he's been the ultimate player coach since he's arrived. But inside the locker room, has he lost anybody? And that goes to the first part of your question: Has this affected the team? You know, I don't think it has. I think what sort of happened is sort of weird because you're at OU. You're expected to be the top dog. You have the target on your back with every single game. But the weight of expectations started to really manifest itself in the last you know, three, four weeks. It is, it, there's been some report, some sources that said, and we'll, we'll, we'll find out there when they take on Iowa State, if this is true or not, that this team is actually more relaxed now that they have a loss now that you know, not everyone in the world is looking at them and criticizing them for only winning by one one score against a bunch of different teams throughout this year. Now that they're counted out, now they're going to bounce back. I, I think that's kind of crazy to say ten games into the season, but if if it's true, we will find out Saturday that this team couldn't handle the weight of expectations of being undefeated. But now that they had their first setback. Now they're going to come together and show what they can really do. Bob, really appreciate your time. Last one here. Um, what's the been reaction to the move to the SEC? What does what do the fan base think about that? They love it. Yeah, unequivocally. It's not even like there. There might be like five percent of the fans like, oh, you know, we're getting rid of Bedlam or Oklahoma State or what about the traditional? We don't really have traditional rivalries anyway. Out, you know, just outside of the the usual ones. I mean, oh, it's like. OU Nebraska this year was a nice throwback to like 50 years ago when it mattered, but to the current day, current players, they didn't quite understand what the hoopla was all about. And then when you you start thinking about the trip, you know, I know I'm sure there'd be some sort of pod system, and like OU wouldn't go to Baton Rouge like some once every four years or something. But that's a heck of a lot better than going to Lawrence than going to Lubbock. Like I think fans are itching for the ability to see some of these stadiums. And they want, they really want to see is the OU stop being so complacent to do just enough to win the Big 12 and, and then not be able to perform at an elite level. The SEC is not going to allow you to do that. You're going to have to keep getting better. No stagnation whatsoever. And I think that's what the fan, the, the fan base is so pumped to see is how good, how elite, can OU be on a year-to-year basis? It might take their lumps the first first couple of years, but if they can figure it out, just how good, how great can this program that's been you know pretty dang good and you know anyway for years and years, what's that next level that this organization can achieve? You want to hear more from the Sooner side of things at Sooner Scoop on Twitter. He is Bob Prisbillo, covers the Sooners for Sooner Scoop. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. You got it, guys. Appreciate it.